Hello, I'm Amy from Moonmindology.com and today I want to look at the chart of Robert Kennedy Jr. So I was asked quite a long time ago for this reading and I poured and poured over the rectified time but I finally come to the point where I am happy. So got him as a Aquarius ascendant but one thing that we have to pay attention to is that his ascendant is in the nakshatra Shatabishak. And this nakshatra is linked to addiction. And he did have a problem with drugs in his youth. So the chart ruler goes to the ninth house where it is exalted. And this house is very, very interesting because it's one of the main factors that I felt that this ascendant could be true. The ninth house is all about the father as well as teachers as well as publishing and law. And if you know anything about him, this house has got to be very complex. He studied at Harvard and gained a degree in history and literature. Then he studied economics and then he went on to law. He failed his bar exam twice. And I do believe that at the same time, he was in a bit of trouble with the law for a little bit of heroin possession. So this in itself says to me that there is a very complex relationship with his nine house. But not only that, his father and his uncle were both assassinated when he was very young. But he's also written books. So you, you think about it in one sense, a few things that you look at and you think, oh, the ninth house must be bad. And then other things you look at, you think, oh, the ninth house must be good. So it's complex. Mars is in the ninth, which makes him want to share his opinions and he's very passionate about justice. So this is great for becoming a lawyer, but there can be a tendency to be arrogant as well. Mars in the ninth gives a great force and he is indeed very successful. There's great luck with property as well. Saturn in the ninth, that's great for philosophy. And this gives him a rational and mature mentality as well as luck with foreigners. And of course, if you are the president of the United States or you're going for that, you need to be good with foreigners. <laughs> so Mars and Saturn together, they're a very polarizing force and there can be a lot of tension because there can be frustration, but also tendencies moving towards being a workaholic. And these people can always feel like they're moving forward in one as much as they can, but also their feet are stuck in the mud. So there can be anger and a sense of guilt as well. This is great for technical ability, but there can be inappropriate behaviors and actions. Getting in trouble for heroin whilst you're doing your bar exam is one of them, one of those things that is fairly inappropriate. <laughs> so Neptune in the ninth is very, very spiritual and there can be confusion around the father as well. Yeah, losing your father at the age of nine to an assassin, yeah, that, that, that's very confusing. So looking at all the rulers in this ninth house, there's a great love for travel and learning. The third and the ninth is a good sign of publishing books and writing. And the education can be inspired by the father as well as there can be inheritance from him. The mother can experience a great loss and sometimes she may move away and leave her night life. So ninth ruler, the father on the twelfth, that's loss and separation from him. I wouldn't be surprised if Robert does have a sense of deep spirituality that was developed after the assassination of his father. And I think he was sent away to live with another family as well. Um, and I know that he did go to, to boarding schools. But in that time, he experimented with drugs. And drugs are those things which take us beyond this world. And of course, where is that most shown? That's in the 12th house. And there's so many planets in his 12th house. So this can include escapes of the sexual variety, you know, using substances, it's an escape. And even down to, you know, overworking and indulging in spirituality in some in some respects so he needs to move constantly and he needs to have a cause he needs something to escape this unfairness within life and luckily he seems to have found something that he can really sink his soul into so his career he was always destined to be involved with religion or justice of some kind and seeing as the ninth is about law and publishing that is where he has made most of his money. It is 
unsurprising that Kennedy went into environmental law as the tenth ruler is conjunct Saturn and Neptune, which are all about oil. His work in this life is very much going to be linked to oil, coal, farming and manual labour and all of these things he has indeed done work with. Venus is in the 12th house which is a very strong position for Venus and it's good for working behind the scenes. So Venus can create a lot of passion but there is disappointment with lovers and it's also a sign of secret affairs and it is afflicted and it is in a dustana so it can make the throat weak and we know he does have a problem with his speech so this is also very charitable and he is undoubtedly very generous and gives a lot of money to charities with with this kind of placement rahu in the 12th gives him love things that are foreign and a desire to collect material things unfortunately this can also be a penchant for mind altering substances and self-destructive tendencies which as i did mention is something that he did experience in his youth the sun in the 12th is good for spirituality but there can be a great interest in solitude and things that are out of this world such as drugs and this is also exacerbated by the low self-esteem that can be felt with the sun in the 12th house however there can be a great love for history and as i said he studied his history history and literature mercury in the 12th this is very spiritual and there is a lot of work to do with charities however there can be problems with the central nervous system, which is evident in the fact that he has spasmodic dysphonia, which is a neurological disorder. In 2001, when he was first diagnosed with this problem, he was in the grand cycle of mercury. Despite all the damage that is obviously done to the throat in this chart, he does have sun conjunct Rahu, which gives a loud voice. And he is, he is loud. He says his thing. He gets his opinion out. His problem is actually his nervous system, not the tw second house. And it's all linked to this 12th house. And Mercury is the Karaka for speech and communication. And it is afflicted. So this played a prominent role in me rectifying to this ascendant the ruler of the fourth fifth seventh eighth and ninth are in the twelfth house so there can be problem with children and there can be few benefits from them or there can be some kind of unhappiness or separation from them children can be taken away uh, as a result of breakdowns of the relationship or they can just simply move away of their own accord there can be problems with romantic relationships as well, which can lead to sorrow. And I think he's been married uh, three times. I would expect him with this chart, a chart to be married to a foreigner, but I don't think he has been. But as the seventh, ru uh, seventh, seventh ruler is jammed between Rahu and Mercury, multiple marriages. As I said, that's true. So also Mercury there, the wives can be strong communicators. The fact that the 12th house is so packed is all about somebody who does believe in humanitarian courses and does fight for people. However, the 12th house is about bed pleasures as well. So having this much activity there is a bit of a clue for his penchant for infidelity and it is linked to the problem of not being able to keep it in his pants. And I think he's, he's admitted that. <laughs> but yes so jupiter in the fourth is overall is pretty good for happiness and having a sunny disposition also philosophy religion are important so the home life may have been quite pleasant but the mother could have been overbearing but there is also a good relationship with the father and it can be very good for career and make spirituality part of his reputation but as it's jupiter it can be law which it is it uh, makes a, an aspect of the 10th house so it shines its benef benefic properties onto the 10th house but also colors the 10th house with jupiterian essence jupiter in the fourth can be a sign that there's a big family and he is one of 11 
The ruler of the second and the eleventh is in the fourth, so his mum may have been a source of wealth, and there can be some assistance from her in gaining property. And this is a good sign for obtaining a good education, and there can be a solid foundation on which you know his childhood is built upon. However, the eleventh ruler is a little bit difficult and could have brought some difficulty to his mother's life. And you know, of course, we look at the situation, it's not difficult to deal with multiple assassinations within your family. And you know, hearing about the Kennedy curse, she must have lived for many years feeling pretty terrified. Jupiter is 12th from the moon, so there can be a, a life of ups and downs for uh, Mr. Kennedy, and he has experienced that very publicly. Pluto is in the seventh. Now this can create relationships and marriages to people who are very controlling and also passive aggressive in some place. So there can also be cases where it's just a massive power struggles between him and his marital partners. K2 is in the sixth and this really drives an interest in charity and humanitarian efforts. As this is the sixth, there can be odd methods in his daily activities and works because K2 can be quite strange. He is currently, uh, I mean, he is currently looked at for being quite unusual as a Democrat at the moment. He's worked in environmental law and seems to go against a lot of what the rest of the Democrats are saying. That's unconventional. His Uranus is in the fifth, which is about a genius mind who thinks outside the box. And so there can be sudden gains and losses, which can be linked to investments. The moon is in the fifth, and so there can be some li past life karma that pushes him towards certain things and the development of certain talents. And teaching is something that is very close to his heart looking at this. And most of all, he will love children. And that probably comes from being in a big family. As I always say, wherever the moon goes, you will have some instability. So what is the fifth house about? It's about love affairs and his children so there is some instability in that area and he really does indeed like himself an affair uranus and the moon together can be somebody who likes to change their mind a lot and we, we have seen that in in his marriages but it can also be great insight but the emotions can be unpredictable but it can also be a sign of problems with his mother or separation from her in some shape some way shape or form it may not even be a physical separation from her. It could just be an emotional separation. Overall, as a president, I think he will probably be very involved with uh, historical arguments, geopolitics and laws. So he would be good for the environment on, on a serious level, you know, not just people pretending to like the environment, but actually selling you stuff that is gonna make them money. He will actually introduce ideas that work it's not about investments for him it is actually going to be about making a difference because he has so many planets in capricorn that's usa's second house and i think he could really be great for finances in america as well as the general working person as jupiter is in the sixth so could he actually be the president well a couple of these planets do line up exactly so this is plausible he also does have a very close connection to Vladimir Putin's chart, so he could be able to have some interaction with him as well. He's currently in the grand cycle of Venus and in the sub cycle of the sun, and there's a lot of 12th house things coming up here, but Venus is indeed a very strong planet. On the day of inauguration, I don't see such a strong chart. However, the Sun and Pluto are on his Mercury, but it's in his 12th house and Mars will be on K2 exactly. So it doesn't look quite like a winner to me, but I could be wrong as both Pluto and the Sun are control and they are directly on one of his planets. I mean, he has the best transits and links to the USA chart that I have seen when looking at different contenders so far but I would really need to correlate all of the runner's charts before I can really come to the point where I, I can say to you, I think this is the strongest chart. And of course, we won't have that 
until we are a little bit closer to election. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you like my content, please press the like button, subscribe, and also if you want a reading from me, you can go to moonmindology.com and book an appointment with me. Thank you very much and I'll see you next week. Bye.